Hey everybody, how you doing? Dash and Dave here again. This is what I love about this game, you know, and uh, making it work. And of course, I have nothing to do with this. Tony has nothing to do with this. The people are buying food and having it delivered. Why is that? Who knows? You know, a rainy, crappy day, maybe, you know, who knows? But, you know, that's the thing that we don't have any control over and neither does DoorDash or Tony. And that is, are the people going to be buying? You can make the product as, as attractive as possible and put out all the offers there and coupons and everything else. But if they ain't buying, you know, you ain't selling. So that's just the way it goes. That seems to be the breakdown. $5 for 100 miles. 175 miles gives you $10, and then at 225 you get $15, and that's it. That is interesting information, and this is what I was going to talk about, you know, one of the things I'll talk about when I talk about how I've learned things during this slow period. Pay attention to what people tell you, and pay even more attention to what they don't tell you, and then put it all together, scramble it all up, and try to get the best case answer you can for the given information that you have at the time. <laughs> but if they ain't buying, you know, you ain't selling. Pay attention to what people tell you and pay even more attention to what they don't tell you. And those two facts, fellow dashers, are the two facts that you need to understand and accept in order to be a successful DoorDash dasher. I'm gonna keep hammering at these two points because without these two points, you're going nowhere real fast. Over the past couple years, specifically when the pandemic hit, a friend of mine, their daughter, has been doing the DoorDash thing in another town uh, north and east of uh, where I live here, and they have talked that thing up one side and down the other and absolutely love it. Now, originally, I thought this food delivery thing was just ridiculous, absurd, people paying to have their McDonald's delivered. Couldn't believe it. So I hesitantly applied to DoorDash and got on in just a couple weeks. And Thursday, August 19th, 2021, did my first DoorDash dashes. And with the exception of a couple months working for UPS over the Christmas season this last year of 2021, I haven't looked back. Man, I wish I had started this two years ago. But if they ain't buying, you know, you ain't selling. DoorDash and every other delivery gig service platform is driven by customer need and or demand. We, the delivery gig drivers, do not exist without this customer need and demand. DoorDash CEO Tony Hsu and others like him saw this demand and decided to create a platform in which to supply the demand. I'm not going to get into the politics, the process, procedures, or manners of for-profit capitalism business. That is not the purpose of this video. If you don't like the manner in which DoorDash or any other delivery gig platform performs its business, then you have the choice to choose to not participate. You can either A, start your own delivery platform and do it the way you think it's supposed to be done, or just go somewhere else. McDonald's and Wendy's are hiring. The purpose of this video is to take what is offered to you from others and then put it to use for your own personal benefit. But if they ain't buying, you know, you ain't selling. Customer need and demand for our delivery gig services is the one aspect of this job that we have absolutely no control over whatsoever. It is what it is when it is what it is. We, we just can't change that. If you've done the delivery gig platform service for any length of time, you know as well as I do. There's busy times, there's slow times, there's good times, there's bad times. So where is this all going to end up? I have no idea. I'm not going to make a prediction with the exception of this one right here. But give the people a service, a comfort, a luxury. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to stick around. Now, will it slow down and will we uh, stabilize to a point where not all of us are going to find work all of the time? That's a very good possibility. 
but delivery gig service is here to stay it's up to you to make it work for yourself and that includes you know some unpleasant aspects of the work that is the case in any and every job you know take the picture swipe twice you know hacks and all these other apps that are designed to make the job so much easier for you in the long run I believe hurt you you've got to give the best service you can you are a service provider play by the rules do what is expected of you use the various insulated hot bags at your disposal have a smile on your face don't act like some guy's got a thousand pound weight on your shoulders don't act like you're having a good time have a good time in reality because if you're not you're in the wrong business here and maybe you're going to be one of those that are sticking around for the long run and cashing in on this gig all right so you know just to highlight where's the gig economy going to go you know it's anybody's guess it's here to stay you know at what level is it going to be that's anybody's guess i think it's going to stay around long enough and possibly grow a little bit after we stabilize a little bit here and remember this is the slow period right now here in march of 2022 that you know some of us are going to be able to do this full time you know you've got to have some dedication to it and willpower quick-witted quick on your feet in order to make it work for you full time as I noted I started uh, late last year 2021 ran for several weeks uh, learning the app getting proficient with the app figuring out how everything worked at the time I was uh, using the one dollar per mile metric I've been watching videos on YouTube you know there's a million of them out there figuring out the algorithm one more time there's no secret to the algorithm the biggest secret is there is no secret okay so kind of I kind of look at the two and a half months that I door dashed in 2021 as my orientation and then my real work started in January of 2022 at that time with the data that I had collected one dollar per mile metric was just not going to work with the mileage that I get with Speedwagon so I had to double that up to two bucks per mile and since then that has pretty much worked for me very well I have of course lost top dasher status that's okay every day I get up and I go to the next day on the calendar when it's available and schedule out my hours so I am saved I am reserved I have that time slot locked in as has been noted the first quarter of any year economically across the board is the slowest quarter of the year and I'll tell you I have learned much more in these slow times than I have during the busy times when the orders are coming so fast and hot that you don't even click uh, got it on the last screen for the last delivery that you made that they popped up another offer you know you've got to think quickly you got 30 seconds to make a choice but the offers are coming so hard and fast you can't hit the decline button fast enough but then, you know, here in the first quarter of 2022, January was actually a pretty good month, and then things kind of slowed down in February. You know, that's where I'm sitting there for 10 or 15 minutes wondering, did Tony forget me? You know, am I doing something wrong? And, you know, it, this is where you get, you get the offers in, and you have to make a choice. You know, do I stick with the two buck per mile metric? Do I eat a little bit here? I've done a little bit of both. If you followed my videos, you've seen me over a couple week period experimenting with just staying in what I call the duff zone on the east side of Ames and not going anywhere outside of that. That works at times. There's other times that I allow Tony to lead me around town following the money. At times that works. You've got to learn your market, know your market, and work your market. So while I effectively started my DoorDash career during the slowest quarter of any given year, it has provided me a wealth of information during the slow times in which to learn the market, know my market, and work my market. It, it really has taught me a lot. This slower period has allowed me to foster uh, working relationships with uh, store personnel and even some managers at a bunch of uh, restaurants that I go to on a regular basis. You know, I walk in, they see me, they immediately glance over to the table and they go, who you got? What name you need, Dave? You know, and then I say, I need uh, Joe. And so they'll grab Joe's order and then hand it right to me without missing a beat, taking care of their other business at hand. And I'll tell you, some of these people have some great spidey sense. I'll walk into the store there, and I'm heading up to the counter, and it doesn't look like anybody has uh, seen me. And I'll hear, DoorDash is here, and where's that order at? <laughs> you know, so they catch me out of the corner of the eye, and they go, hey, DoorDash is here. Let's get that order going. I've mentioned it before, but Panera Bread, those people are fantastic to work with. Tropical Smoothie Ladies, thank you again very much for everything that you do. Both McDonald's, I walk in there, and nine times out of ten, the order's ready to go. 
Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers. Always like stopping there and picking up an order. It's a pleasure to chat with Presley. Every time I'm given an order, even if there's been a little bit of a snafu and it's taken a little bit longer than most people intend, you know, I always say, they go, here's the order, and I always say, excellent, thank you, or great, or have a good day with a smile on my face and a hearty, you know, uh, voice, you know, I'm not mealy mouth, it's taking too long, you know, trying to maintain a positive flair, and that works with everybody. Even when I go to pick up an order, whether it's it's over on the shelf on the counter, you know, like a Chick-fil-A, and they're just always busier in hell. I pick up the order and I yell, I got so-and-so's order, thank you very much. And a lot of times nobody says anything, but a lot of times they'll go, okay, great, thank you very much. What I'm trying to say here is I'm not a faceless drone. I have a personality, pretty upbeat one too. That works in your favor, people. Now there's one other thing here I want to mention that I've learned uh, during the slow period here. I've seen some videos on this on YouTube and have talked to some other door dashers in my market. And when I, what, what I'm going to try to relate to you is, is when it is busy and the orders are coming you know, every few seconds, what I've determined is, is that when an order is placed on DoorDash, it goes in the lineup, it goes in the queue. When we were really, really slow, I was getting offers for, say, specifically Panera Bread, and would go there and note on my task menu that the pickup is scheduled up to 15 minutes out from the current time. And then the delivery time was another 15 minutes beyond that time. I had talked to the manager, Terry, at Panera Bread there, and I said, did you guys change something? And he goes, no, but you know, come, some of the other dashers had noticed the time differences. Well, this is what I determined just through logic and common sense. When it is so slow and there's not 100 orders in the queue, if you know what I mean, that Panera Bread order got shifted out and pushed out to me, the DoorDash guy, a lot faster than it would have normally that screwed up the timing of everything now it really didn't screw it up you know because Panera was slow they were able to get the order to me usually in a in a pretty timely manner but there were some times I had to get a hold of the uh, customer and say hey things are just a little bit slow you know I think the scheduled time for me to deliver is 12 15 it's only 11 45 most of the time they were very very good with that there were a couple of times when I delivered orders to people and handed it off to them in corporate offices and they go wow I wasn't expecting this for 45 minutes so then I just kind of explain the situation to them and they go okay that's cool thank you very much so again as I say this slow period here for me and my DoorDash career was absolutely instrumental in figuring out strategies figuring out how I'm doing things fostering relationships with these people at the restaurants and even repetitive customers and that is just invaluable on the other side of the coin, during the slow periods here, got to know several dashers in my area. Seemed to run the same few time and time again in the Panera parking lot. We got Nancy, Carly, and then Chloe. When we've got the time, we'll sit around bullshit, trade tips and tricks and strategies. Carly and Nancy and I, uh, last week, I think I mentioned in a previous video, it was a beautiful day. We just sit out there for about a half an hour bullshit and getting to know each other when there was no orders coming in. Carly and I have traded phone numbers, as I mentioned, and uh, we'll send screenshots and quick texts and phone calls as our day rolls through. You know, what's your target, what's your goal, and where are you at, and getting any pings, and once or twice I've said, hey, uh, Arby's is just way too full, stay away from them, or there's a traffic accident over here, avoid the area, yada, yada, yada. Pay attention to what people tell you, and pay even more attention to what they don't tell you. All right, so let's talk about what I mentioned a little bit earlier. In regards to the bonus money, the gasoline reimbursement that we're getting, and they have three tiers, like I said there. Notice that the top tier is 225 miles. After that, nothing is accounted for. That's very interesting. So again, you know, what they've said is at 225 miles accrued, you get $15. 300 miles doesn't pay anything, okay? After 225, that's it. So it's my guess that the vast majority of the Dasher community does not exceed 225 miles by a great number. That means that there's a, the vast majority of Dashers are, quote, part-timers versus full-timers. Now, I know there's a lot of full-timers out there, but it's my understanding there's about a million Dashers. And I'm guessing that the vast majority of them do not 
log more than 225 miles or much more beyond 225 miles. Shit, I cracked that off in three days. So, you know, you can go, oh, the full timers are getting screwed, you know. Hey, at least you're getting something, you know. And, and in my opinion, I haven't, you know, said this before, Uber Eats, Grubhub, and a few of the others are putting surcharges on the customer to pay for the fuel reimbursement thing. DoorDash is not doing that. This is coming out of their pocket. Okay. They're not, yeah, all business costs get passed on to the customer, but it's not a direct fee right now like the other g delivery gig places. So I give it up for DoorDash for doing that and saying, hey, we're giving this to you. Okay. So anyway, so looking at what they say and looking at what they don't say okay there there's not that many full-timers out there what we really call full-timers that are working 40 50 60 hours i've met several in my town but i've met more that you know how many hours are you working today oh i'm gonna work four then i'm gonna work two later on you know yada 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 all right so let's look at some other things that we have been told tony's been pretty consistent over the last year or two that i've seen in media news reports claiming that your average door dasher can easily make 20 to 23 dollars per hour on average so let's think about what he did not say, but take what he says at face value, because I've proven it in my market, and many others have too in their market. What did Tony just tell us by not telling us something? He's telling us to cherry pick. Now, I'm not going to put words into his mouth, and I'm just, you know, making assumptions based on the reality that I have found it to be. And that is for me in my market and just about everybody's confirmed it two dollars per mile minimum metric is about what you need to make 20 to 23 dollars per hour over you know a core four five six eight hour period you know when things are really good so tony has kind of let it be known that if you do nothing but take everything you're not going to make that hourly pay okay Tony knows there's cheap people out there now it's a tip based delivery system just like ordering food at a restaurant is tip based service so we can argue all day long whether or not that's right or wrong or whether the base pay needs to be higher or not it is what it is work with what it is and what it is right now is in most markets, in my market specifically, we don't have a lot of peak pay uh, time slots. Some markets have it all day, very frequently. But in my market and other markets that don't have a lot of peak pay, Tony has kind of said, you know, you know, you can make twenty to twenty-three dollars an hour. How do you do that? You've got to be selective in choosing the offers that come up. It's like I've said before many times in my market, you know, no tip, no trip and very low paying metric, I'll decline those. Then if enough people do it, when enough of those orders get stacking up and then one or two of them or two or three of them are going to the same general area, they stack them. Stacked orders, especially when you pick up at one specific merchant store, going to two different addresses that are within blocks of each other are great money makers. Individually, neither one of those jobs are worth a shit. Combined, they're fantastic. And that's just the way it works. So, you know, getting back to Tony knowing what's going on and that there's cheap people out there, you know, you just can't layer on $15 service fee on every order so we can all make, you know, $30 an hour, you know, two trips per hour. That's just not the way it is. You've got to figure out how it works in your market and make it work to your benefit. And like I said, they they kind of tell you by not telling you when you look at these things. You know, I'm just going to touch on it very shortly here about the delivery algorithm. I've already made a video on it, ruffle feathers and all that. The biggest secret to the delivery algorithm is there is no secret. Yes, they have a core goal that they state that everybody focuses on and gets their panties in a wad that I'm the best dasher sitting in the parking lot yet you pull in and get the job. Why is that? That is because the algorithm, while it has a stated goal and a stated purpose, is a lottery system, and it must be a lottery system. Otherwise, if there are one or two things that all one million of us could do in order to maximize our profit stream, we'd all be doing it, and 90% of the orders wouldn't be getting picked up and taken. 
and then where would we be then? The customer base would go away and then we would all be out of a job. So the algorithm must be a lottery system that spreads the wealth, much like hidden tips. If the tips were not hidden, people would be using those apps or sitting in a parking lot somewhere, decline, 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 decline. Ooh, $30 for a job, I'm taking that. And then you and I are out of the mix of the wealth being spread, you know? So anyway, I like hidden tips. I hope it never goes away. Ah, oh, there's Nancy. So just to expand and clarify on the hidden tips, if if tips were not hidden, then that would mean that the $30 job would be offered up straight on face value. Okay, so you have the super cherry picker that's just sitting in a parking lot somewhere declining everything looking for the really good, good paying jobs. So the $30 job offer comes up and the super cherry picker takes it. With tips being hidden, that $30 job becomes a seven or $8 job and the super cherry picker declines it. Meanwhile, another dasher who's not currently on a job may get that offer up and take it because the super cherry picker declined it. All right, that was Nancy. She's a retired gal, lives about 20 miles north of Ames, and she just does uh, the DoorDash thing for a little pocket money and just to keep herself busy. As you saw, she's got a Prius. I think she said she's getting upwards of 50 miles a gallon. She is a top dasher. She can dash anytime she wants. She does set schedules, but you know she can play anytime she wants. She's making top dasher work. The number one thing that she has going in her favor to make Top Dasher work for her and you know her lifestyle and her needs is that Prius. You know it's a hybrid. She's getting 50 miles a gallon. You know where I'm in speed wagon getting 12 miles a gallon. You know so that's the difference. You know the and a big difference. You know so you know can you make Top Dasher work? Sure you can. You know for some people like me it's not going to work. My mileage rate is just going to kill me. You know on fuel costs. So anyway. You know, and that ties into, you know, making the market work for you and also ties into, you know, in, in many cases, you know, like I said, with Tony saying, you know, the average dasher can make 20 to $23 per hour. You know, he's kind of telling you, be selective in your choices. Now, in Nancy's case with the Prius, you know, to be top dasher, you've got to take seven out of every 10 orders offered to you to maintain a 70% minimum acceptance rate. I don't know her actual numbers, but at the end of a day, end of a shift, she might be only making $16 an hour, but she has nowhere near the fuel expenses that I do. Nancy is probably making more at the end after all expenses per hour than I am because I have such high fuel costs. One uh, quick note on top dasher status. I was having a conversation with an individual over on another YouTube channel video, and you know, this person was under the misconception that as top dasher, you get better offers than all the other dashers that are not top dashers. This is not the case. This is not true, and nowhere does DoorDash indicate that this is true. And I have proven it to myself, and many other people have too. Being a top dasher does not get you better offers, except when it is slow. Then DoorDash has explicitly said right in the Top Dasher FAQ pages that when things are slow, you, the top dasher, win the coin flip on a job offer over a non-top dasher, okay? But think about this for a second. <laughs> You're sitting in a parking lot with somebody and you're a top dasher. The other guy is not a top dasher. You're gonna win the coin flip on the offer that comes up. We know that. Guess what? That's a shitty order. It's $2.50 base pay and no tip. Why did you get that as a top dasher? Because you're a top dasher and they didn't give it to me who's sitting right next to you who is not a top dasher. Do you get better offers as top dasher? <laughs> you're gonna have to think about that one, folks. But if they ain't buying, you know, you ain't selling. Pay attention to what people tell you and pay even more attention to what they don't tell you. Learn your market, know your market, and work your market. Understand that the delivery algorithm is somewhat of a lottery system. Sometimes you're going to come up all cherries and sometimes you're going to get three turds in a row. You are an independent contractor that is providing a service. Provide that service to the best of your ability. 
you're driving around delivering food. This is not rocket science, but some of you want rocket science pay. You whine and cry and complain about how Tony and DoorDash is screwing you over. The vast majority of us are making this work to the best of our ability. Those of you that can't and those of you that throw food down and, and uh, berate customers for giving uh, low tips and all that stuff, you're a stain on the community. Please leave and leave the work to the professionals. Alright guys and gals, that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully you can take something from this video and put it to use for yourself. Thanks for coming along for the ride and hope to see you next time.